Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Minister Jewel Williams here with you for this Wednesday Word for March 23rd. And we're continuing our theme of identity theft. Are you allowing your name to be damaged? We're now moving to the book, uh, the chapter, chapter 38 of the book of Jeremiah. And I'm going to be reading verses 14 through 24. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for another opportunity to come and to study your word. So we just ask that you would help us, lead us, and guide us so that we can hear from you, obey you, so that we will hold on to the identity that you've placed in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Starting with verse 14, it reads, Then King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and had him brought to the third entrance to the temple of the Lord. I'm going to ask you something, the king said to Jeremiah. Do not hide anything from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, if I give you an answer, will you not kill me? Even if I did give you counsel, you would not listen to me. But King Zedekiah swore this oath secretly to Jeremiah. As surely as the Lord lives, who has given us breath, I will neither kill you nor hand you over to those who want to kill you. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel says. If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared and the city will not be burned down. You and your family will live. But if you will not surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, this city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians and they will burn it down. You yourself will not escape from them. King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over to the Babylonians, but the Babylonians may hand me over to them and they will mistreat me. They will not hand you over, Jeremiah replied. Okay, obey the Lord by doing what I tell you. Then it will go well with you and your life will be spared. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in the palace of the king of Judah will be brought out to the officials of the king of Babylon. Those women will say to you, they misled you and overcame you. Those trusted friends of yours, your feet are sunk in the mud. Your friends have deserted you. All your wives and children will be bought, bought, brought out to the Babylonians. You yourself will not escape from their hands, but will be captured by the king of Babylon, Babylon, and this city will be burned down. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, do not let anyone know about this conversation or you may die. So just a little bit of background. This first part of this, the first part of this chapter, Jeremiah was in prison because of his refusal to compromise God's word. Uh, he continued to give the messages that he was told by God to give. And that resulted in the princes trying to get rid of him. And, and God did not allow Jeremiah to stay in prison, but had him released. And we would think that after such a terrible experience, Jeremiah would give up, slow down, or change what he did. But we see that as we come into this part of the scripture, Jeremiah's experiences did not change who he was or what he was called to do. And so it's a lesson for us today that you and I cannot let the difficulties in life change us, change who we were called by God to be. We must continue to do as he tells us. So what are the, some of the points that we want to see in this lesson? The first thing was, you know, we, we look at the scripture says, do not hide anything from me. The king wanted Jeremiah to tell him everything that the Lord has said to him. And that would seem really good to us. But the truth is, is with, with this king as well as with people today is they want to know the truth and have God's will revealed to them. But what in fact is what they really want is what they really want is, you know, you to tell me just some good news or what's some good go godly favor that's going to be on my life. They are not always looking for the instructions. They call for obedience, humbling of oneself or anything that they think may make them look bad. And this king didn't want to be put in a difficult situation. So he wasn't really looking for um, what God wanted him to do in terms of being obedient. He was really kind of looking for a way out. And so Jeremiah's response to the king was, you know, if I give you an answer, will you not kill me? Or even if I did give you counsel, you would not listen. So Jeremiah's response to this king re re uh, request really was if I answer, you know, you're not going to want to hear what I'm saying. You you may even want to kill me. But the bottom line is, are you going to really listen? So Jeremiah is expressed, you know, what Jeremiah is expressing tells us about our human nature. We say we want to know what God's desire is for us, but then when we receive it, 
it's either, you know, when we receive either from the messages preached by our pastors or ministers or, you know, what we learn in Bible studies or when God sends in individuals to us to help us, we can become angry at the individual because of the truth that they're bringing us. Because what happens is we don't really want to hear the message of change. And so we may not want to kill them as, as they physically want to kill Jeremiah, but sometimes by our actions, we do try to kill their name or make it more about them. So we'll say, oh, they was just being busybodies. They was doing it. So we make it more about them uh, instead of realizing really these things coming to us are really what God has spoken for us to help us. And, and so we simply may not want to accept what's being said, just as the king refused to accept the messages Jeremiah was bringing to him. And so what was the message Jeremiah brought? He said, obey the Lord by doing what I tell you. Then it will go well with you and your, and your life will be spared. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. So Jeremiah is telling the king that if he obeys, his life will be spared. But if he refuses, then there's going to be some consequences. And this is the same message that he has continued to give to the people over and over again in one form or another. But it's always been this has been the substance of his message. And so the essence of this message is that if we, we want to say that we want to do as God tells us, then we really do have to obey his instructions to us. And those instructions, again, come from, come to us through the written word of God, through the preached word that's, that presents the truth of God's word, through our Bible studies, either you know in Sunday school, midweek, or our, our own personal Bible study. Those are just a few ways that God will begin to reveal what he desires for us. And the point is that when we are given the truth of God's word, the question to us then is, will you obey what you now have been given? When we choose to obey, we find that our lives are spared. We're spared from having to deal with the consequences of sinful disobedience. We're spared um, the fallout, if you will, that happens when we make wrong choices, sinful uh, choices. We, 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 we don't have to deal with, for example, if you know, the Lord tells you don't be in a certain relationship because you know it's not right, but yet you refuse and continue to be in that relationship, there's some fallout that can happen. You're, you know, even if you, at some point the relationship breaks up, now you're hurt, you're bruised emotionally, you're fragile. Those are some consequences that you could have avoided had you been obedient to what God told you, told you to do. And so when we refuse to obey what we know to be true. We do set ourselves up to be taken into captivity, into a spiritual bondage, where now we are in, not as able to get out of those snares that we've caught ourselves up in. So what's the lesson for us today? Well, we, we've continued to hear, you know, Jeremiah telling the people that God required a holy people, people that obeyed his word. And when they refused to obey, you know, they would find themselves being set up to deal with their disobedience. It wasn't because God, you know, was just being a mean God, but God is a holy God and he's a just God. And we have to realize that if he says something is true, his His words are always true. So if, if he's telling us through his word, through, through his Holy Spirit, through the leading and guiding, of his people that we have to be obedient to him so that we can then see those provisions in our life. But if we're disobedient, we realize that there's judgment, punishment, consequences that will result in that. And so uh, we don't want to allow our, our identity to be damaged. We don't want our own foolishness to change who we are. God calls us his children. He calls us righteous because of his son. He calls us faithful because of his son. But when we refuse to obey, we change who we are into being obedient children of God. And so now we have the name of that which is disobedient. And so next week, we're going to go into the final lesson of the book of Jeremiah. And we'll be reading that final chapter of Jeremiah in the fall of Jerusalem. And it's just bringing together what Jeremiah has been saying all this time. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for another day and we thank you for allowing us to just hear a word from you. Now, Lord, help us to be all you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.